Hey everyone, welcome to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 Gen 5 for the PlayStation 1. I'm Insetic, with me is Blank Tester. Hey kids, how's it going? So yeah, it's 2002, but they are still making a Tony Hawk version for the previous console. Though now it's only for the PlayStation 1, there's no Nintendo 64 version. And also, unlike the uh, Gen 5 version of Tony Hawk 3, Shaba Games did not make this one. Shaba is now making their own game for the Activision O2 lineup. They're making Wakeboarding Unleashed, which I played forever and a half ago if you want to check that out. But so the development of Tony Hawk 4 for the PS1 was handled to Vicarious Visions to do. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's, they've done a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so... Vicarious Visions, again, tried to match as much as they could what direction Neversoft had gone with their main version of Tony Hawk 4. So again, the levels are now open level, no main time limit. You pick each goal uh, individually and then you will get the directions and a time limit to do that goal. Though this is still, you know, based on the old engine. It's based on, wow. the, you know, Tony Hawk 1 and 2 engine. And, um, yeah, you'll, you'll see that this is pretty much pushing the, you know, PlayStation 1 to the limit of what they could do. Because, yeah. again, you know, with this kind of format, with this kind of setup, Neversoft was able to make much larger levels. And so, in, in trying to get as close as they could here, you know, you will see some, like, lower res textures. You will see some simpler textures, some things that might just be, like, one color or such. And you will see more kind of major redesigns to areas. Like sure. you, I mean, Blake Tester, you just saw the, uh, the college in the PS2 version. Right. So as we ride around here, you'll see that it's a lot more simplified and, you know, some areas made more arcadey kind of, you know, where there was something like, a, you know, set up to get kind of to that sewer area. There's not going to be any of that here. Now over in the mm -hmm. corner, it's going to be some half pipes and some rails sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, they, it seems like they've taken the 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 gist of, of the level and really boiled it down to its main elements, kind of. Um, right. And, like, you know, they've stripped out the NPCs. Mm -hmm. um, and it... Wow, this is... I had no idea Vicarious Visions worked on this. Yeah, That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, looking them up, they were sort of part of Activision doing some of the handheld versions of their games I mean, around this time. not just that, they've done like a ton of stuff that's like totally un like in different genres and stuff. I think recently, didn't they? Yeah, they did Destiny 2 for, for PC. Oh. Yeah, like these guys have done all kinds of stuff. They did a bunch of the Skylanders games. Um... Hmm. Yeah. As oh, like, shit. What, what are they the main devs of, though? Like, uh, are they the main devs of anything, or are they, you know, kind of a porting house? They did... I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, they did the Wii versions of several Guitar Hero games. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, huh. you know, for this, they still had that good foundation. You know, that, yeah. that old uh, Neversoft engine. And they, you know, were able to work on some of what Chaba Games had done for the Gen 5 version of Tony Hawk 3. Um, but yeah. then they also did get to incorporate some of the other new developments here, like uh, like spine transfers will be in this game. And a more primitive version of changing grinds and lip tricks uh, is in this game as well. But yeah, the, there aren't the NPCs. Instead, you'll just find the challenges kind of floating on the ground from, like, discs or such. Yeah. And also, the way challenges unlock seems to be more of, like... Uh, God, what am I trying to say? Like, uh, it, 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 it seems to be more one unlocks the next, which unlocks the next, which unlocks okay, the next. Okay, more linear. Ra ra yeah, rather than, uh, you know, as much versatility as there is in the Gen 6. Like, you know, in, in the Gen 6 version... You think about college, and, like, there's eight people you could talk to that'll give you two challenges each. Mm -hmm. um, and you always have to do their first before the second. But 
I never felt like I was out of challenges. I never had to yeah. ride around trying to find the next one. Whereas here, the first time I again played, uh, you know, Tony Hawk 4 PS1 College, you know, before recording, I ended up kind of doing all the challenges except like the one that would start this tier of tier train of five or six. Mm. So pretty much my last like six challenges were all find the one challenge that was available, do that, ride around, try to find where the next one spawned, do I that see. one challenge that was available sort of. Yeah, there's little things in here like this or like loading sort of. In mm -hmm. Gen 6, you start a challenge and maybe something needs to load in, maybe something needs a second or two to load in. But how Neversoft kind of masks that is by having someone talk to you. Say, right. so, say something where it doesn't feel as much like you're just sitting there waiting for you know that to finish. But here, you go and start a challenge and it's like you're locked in place, the music is still going, your character is kind of idling there. And, and then it starts. Yeah. And you're just like, what do I do? What's going on? Did the game soft lock or something? And then, you know, a couple seconds later, it'll let you start. Yeah. Kind of just little, little awkward things like that. Yeah, but. I mean, that's, I mean, that kind of comes to the territory of pushing the hardware to its limitations. And that's pretty much, I mean, it makes sense. I'm looking at the, um, the stuff that, um, that, uh, Vicarious Visions did. A lot of their stuff is, um, like Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. Uh, they've ported things. Um, and to be good at that and to continue to exist even today, like even today, means that they have to hire people and know how to manipulate hardware. You know, like sometimes when you're porting things from one console to another, it's not just a matter of lifting code and moving it over. Sometimes it's like you're calling on like, like hardware level things especially in like handheld consoles and in um in like much older consoles a lot of times they were calling on like very low level processes to get things to work and you have to have really technical people to be able to move stuff from one console to another you know like the architecture between them can be so different that it's just you know unfeasible right um unless you've got some really talented people so it's I mean, uh, Shaba Games, they're clearly, like, masters of their craft as far as extreme sports games, right? Like, that's why they got picked. But Vicarious Visions got picked because they are absolute kings of porting stuff and working within hardware limitations. Right. Uh, yeah. And that's that, that was a good choice on Activision's part. Yeah. I mean, there's no Nintendo 64 version of this because... Tony Hawk 3 for the N64 already pushed that as far as it could go. Yeah. You know, it's it's not like, you know, where every every game that was on both, like, Xbox One and Xbox 360 were also on PS4 and PS3, kind of. Yeah, almost without exception. Yeah, yeah. Here, it was definitely like, okay, the PlayStation 1 was the only one powerful enough, or maybe yeah. popular enough, to continue having these... Did I mean? Did the Xbox get? I mean, this is gonna sound like a stupid question. Did the Xbox get Tony Hawk games? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. did the original Xbox have? No, I guess the original Xbox lines up with the PS2. So there's nothing before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the Xbox Tony Hawk for the Xbox, in line with the others, started with Tony Hawk Three, but oh, specific okay. for the Xbox that got Tony Hawk Two X. Uh, oh right, right. Made by Treyarch to have yeah. the Tony Hawk 1 and 2 levels. And, right. you know, some exclusives and stuff. Yeah, so they, they could bring that stuff to the Xbox community, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so here in the PS1 version, it's also the same kind of challenges that you've been expecting with, uh, you know, some, some extra ones, obviously some unique to this version, like collecting the flyers or wall riding the graffiti tags. Mm -hmm. um, but you've also seen the standard high score, skate, they added combo... And um, some challenges here in this first level to get you to do different tricks and such, like, uh, you know, pivoting while manualing or doing the lip extensions, which that's kind of funny how this more primitive version tries harder to show you that you can switch up grinds and lips and manuals 
than the Gen 6 version. The Gen 6 version sort of waits a bit to give you a mandatory challenge. Uh, mm. Whereas here, it's like in the first level, it's, you know, do two lip extensions in a row. But I, I mean, I guess they are kind of showing off that they were able to get that in. Yeah. And that it's not just a level pack with what you're able to do in Tony Hawk 2, you know, something like that. But like here, that area I was just in, you know, back in Gen 6, that's, there's nothing over here. It's a grassy area that's the start of kind of the sewer area. Uh-huh. Yeah, whereas over there, you know, concrete, you know, flat ground, but then some quarter pipes and some rails up high, and that'll actually be where a couple of the challenges are. So, Stat yeah. point! Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, there are still some things from, like, the previous games that they keep in here, whereas maybe in the Gen 6 version, uh, those don't have them, like a hidden tape or collecting a hidden deck. You know, you, like, there yeah. aren't hidden decks in the in the Gen 6 version. You buy all the decks with cash. You're not finding them as collectibles, but yeah, in each level here, there's a hidden tape, there's a hidden deck, there are some stat points, at least uh, for a while, to find. Huh. Yeah, yeah. There's actually quite a lot. Like, You'll be doing challenges, and you'll keep doing challenges, and you'll have done, like, 20 challenges in each level. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, then then uh, some challenges have a couple versions of them. Like, we did the first combo challenge, and now it's giving us a second one. Like, there will be multiple skate challenges where you need to do the first one before the second one. And actually, here, this combo hard is... Probably, like, the hardest challenge in the first half of the game, I'd say. Wow. I think it's another one of those things where you just don't have the stats for it. Like, Oh, so you're kind of expected to come back for it? Yeah, I, I guess so. I like, see. You need to grind quite a bit for the, uh, you know, the speed that you end up with. And as you saw, you need to jump, wall ride, jump up to uh -huh. the next rail. And, you know, even high-flying Tony Hawk can't do that with his base stats. But we're yeah. gonna we're gonna back out and put some stat points in and come back. You know, I'm the right. I'm the kind of guy that for better or worse I like to do as much as I can, you know, in a yeah. single thing. God that it's making making me remember Dave Mira too. And like every single level there was one of those where it was like, you really should come back later. But they made it just agonizingly possible enough that I forced myself to do it anyway. That's that you know what you're reminding me of? You're reminding me of um Star Wars uh, Force Unleashed, the first one, where I did that with hard mode. And, like, I wasn't good enough for hard mode, but it was just within reach, so I just forced myself through it to get the achievement for hard yeah. mode and easy mode. Yeah. And then yeah. I found out that there's another difficulty above that, and I said, nope, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. For things like that, like... I don't know, it needs to be damn well obvious. The only the only way I the only time I can think of that was done really well was actually Dave Mira 1. Uh -huh. Um where, you know, like the hardest challenges in the first level were s just completely beyond able. Yeah, beyond to the do. pale, just way, way too hard for you to do. Yeah. When you start. And it's like, okay, well I'm I'm definitely gonna need to come back to this. But yeah, so this is cutting out quite a few attempts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just balancing. And again, in the old engine, uh, the longer you balance your manual, the harder it is to continue. So, you know, just with that low speed and then trying to grind that long, uh, that's that's what makes it tough. I'd say grinding stat is probably one of the most important in this version of the game. Like, uh -huh. Vicarious Visions wants you to do some long grind lines. I think it's because, like, in, in the... The other version, in the PS2 version, there are some long grind lines, but the, like, grinds are an easy thing to implement, you know? So, like, if they have to cut something from the 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 other version of the game to bring it to this version, you know, they're more likely to cut, you know, things like uh, NPCs and more complex set design than a grind line. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I mean... Oof. Yeah. The classic skater uh, <laughs> yeah. crash. Yeah, kind of one thing about this version of the game, and I think you were going to say something else maybe, but while I'm just on this train of thought, um, 
So, kind of like in the, you know, other Gen 5 versions, you start with the special tricks you have and you cannot change those up for the first bit of the game. Uh -huh. Like, specifically, you need to get three gold medals to unlock, you know, other special tricks for you to choose from. And so, you know, you could do that in three levels, but that means for level one and two and three until you do the competition, you're stuck with what you have. And again, just at base stats, you cannot land the 900 unless you start tricking higher up than where you land. You know? Oh, I see. If, okay. if, if you go off a quarter pipe and try to go back down into that, you need a you're hell done. of a lot of speed. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I didn't point out, but in the Gen 6 version, they made the animation for the 900 a lot faster. So, oh, okay. So you could just, like, do that. I mean, it still takes longer than, you know, a special trick worth half as much. But, right. like, it's a lot more feasible than here where it's... It pretty much is an endgame trick unless you start as Tony Hawk. Mm. Um, but here's sort of what I was talking about where I just kind of, due to the challenges I picked, I waited a while to pick the second score challenge. Uh huh. And so I'd pretty much done everything else that didn't require, you know, you to have completed that challenge to spawn in. So uh -huh. now I, I did the pro score challenge, and then pretty much the only challenge I could do next was the extreme score, or the six score, and then the extreme score. And now that I've done the extreme score, it'll spawn like one more. But I, I was riding around doing the one challenge I could do then riding around to find the next single challenge that I could do. So it kinda, yeah. you do kind of lose that that factor of like, Open whoa, world there's a whole thing. lot for me to do, yeah, sort of. And also, I, I don't know if this was a glitch or if Vicarious Visions intended this, but so there's like four high score challenges in each level, you know, rookie or pro sick extreme, and, uh -huh. then, and then corresponding uh, single combo point challenges and the three single combo point challenges li line up with they don't like line up with the pro sick and extreme scores so like oh so like I just had to do you know extreme score get a hundred thousand points in two minutes and right. then I also had to do get a hundred thousand points in one combo in two minutes huh the combo challenges ask you to do just as many points as the, you know, non-combo challenges do right. each level. Where it really feels like that's something where it should have been like, take the first, second, and third of the scores, not the second, third, and fourth, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'll do them. I'm synthetic. I'm good at extreme sports games, but, <laughs> you know, some kid who Yeah, that's a little not, weird. I guess you can always come back for this, but again, yeah. you know, you know, it's like... Again, in the Gen 6, you know, when they ask you to combo, you never have to get as much as when yeah. you're not limited by anything. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That is a little weird. Yeah. But uh, uh, then to round it out, each level has a music, music. track to expand cool. the soundtrack. And then That's after cool. a few seconds, boom. Ba-boom. Amateur goals complete you know, level complete. So, it, you know, it'll tell you if you've done everything you can for the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking about that the problem with the, you know, eventually you kind of run out of ga uh, goals and they it stops feeling so populated. And I'm thinking, like, you know, that happens in kind of open world games too, which this is kind of an open world ish thing yeah, right it's like levels, borderline yeah. open open levels and so like you can accomplish them in a, any order you want but like at a certain point you just start running out of things to do and i'm wondering like what would be the right way to to solve that problem i i, I don't really know yeah again in the gen 6 version you know once you've done every challenge that's you know all the challenges you can do for the moment but it never gave me that same feeling you know, right, like, like I'm, cu I'm curious why it doesn't give you that same feeling. Uh, you know? I guess again because the trees of unlocking goals were were always very separate from each other, and were maybe just you know do one challenge to unlock another one, and that's the end of that tree. Whereas here right. in Gen it doesn't one, go like yeah. one to two to three to four to five. Yeah, here in Gen yeah. one, like 
I, I think like sick score and pro combo is locked behind doing pro score. And then, you know, oh, like see. extreme score is locked behind sick score. And then like horse was locked so it's behind a lot extreme more, score. A lot more smaller chains rather yeah. than longer single chains. Yeah. 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 It's like a single chain with those pro with those scoring and combo ones and then a bunch of single offs that you'll do. Right yeah. Now. But yeah. yeah. So yeah, you can see kind of, you know, how they matched the Gen 6 version or how they did their own thing. Mm -hmm. And though you can kind of pick what level you want to go to, sort of, like you saw I could pick between San Fran, Alcatraz, or Kona, I'll oh. be following the uh, level the order of, of Gen 6. So we'll be oh, going to San Francisco next time in both versions. But yeah, cool. I'll see you then.